From London, I'm joined by Dan Anderberg, who is responsible for the research project Gender Differences in Human Capital Development, the role of cognitive and non-cognitive skills, and of parental investment. Welcome to you, Dan. Well, thank you very much. Please share the focus and key elements of this research project with us. Well, the starting point for the project is really is the gender differences in educational outcomes between boys and girls. So over the last 20 or 30 years, we've seen girls generally overtaking boys in terms of educational attainment overall. But there's still sort of important remaining gaps in terms of subject choices with girls more frequently staying away from, say, stem cells, science, technology, engineering and math. And a lot of people have been looking at the kind of the social background factors that may be driving this. But what people haven't looked so much is tracing more back to the kind of skills that they have and how they develop from a very young age. So the, the aim of the, so the, the core idea of the project is to utilize a data set that allows us to trace children back all the way to birth and map out their skills as they develop from birth up to the age of 16, which is the end of compulsory schooling, to, to see how those skills develop, how, do they, how they relate to parent, parental choices and inputs, and then ultimately how that sort of relates to educational outcomes and subject choices. Yeah, because why do we need to advance knowledge on gender differences in human capital development? Well, think about it this way. Human capital is a resource and we want to use it in the most efficient way. So to some extent, uh, the way people make, people make choices in education reflects an allocation of talent. And we want uh, the, the allocation of talent to be the most efficient that we can have it to be. It also, of course, it also promotes equality per, per se, but if you want to go just with the efficiency argument, that is an, that is an efficiency argument that is quite uh, sufficient in, in, in its own right. We want to make good choices that allows us to, to be the most efficient that we can be. So in terms of future impact, what will be the impact of these research findings? Well, people are making choices all the time and we want to understand what, what is driving these choices. And if they're making choices that are not necessarily the best for, for their kids or for, their, for the uh, economy at large, then we want to think about how we can uh, now Im improve on those choices. We have a lot of uh, policy directed at, at, uh, at children and their educational choices, but maybe we should also think about parents and think about how we kind of um, uh, nudge them to make the right choices for their kids. And for example, stop uh, gender biases uh, appearing in, in, in parents' choices. It sounds very interesting and we look forward to hearing more, but can you uh, share with us when you will be uh, having uh, the first results ready? As I said, we are using a data set that allows us to track children all the way from, from birth up to age 16, so that means it's a multi-stage data set. And that takes quite a long time just to map out the data set to start with. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing at the moment. That, that would allow us to sort of diagnose, to understand what is going on in the data. Uh, so the next stage is then to start to code up the, the larger underlying uh, estimation, which is trying to, uh, to estimate the human capital production functions you know, over multiple stages. So that's a, a kind of a technology that has developed in the last decade or so. And it is quite sort of coding intensive. And the expectation that this is likely to take more like up to a year to, to, to fully sort of build up and uh, get uh, good results out of that. So about a year, I would say, until we have uh, sensible results. Thank you for sharing the idea of the project and the best of luck. Thank you very much.